sorry. <laughs> We're gonna that opening song, everyone. Hi, welcome Hi. back. That was a we're fun back. little break. That was a great break. Fun little break. We took a break. Took a little break. And then break. we're a new episode. Mm. Yes. <laughs> this is episode 48 of yes. Pocket Pod Canada A. We just had so many fun Canada things to share. We wanted to break it into multiple bits. Couldn't this cram time it all now. in to one episode. Multiple so you're getting we're back. two. Do we want to talk about some celebrities? Yeah, let's talk about Canadian celebrities. Our favorite oh, celebrities that goodness. you might not know about. Oh, yay. This is good. I love it. Yes. Intro some Can new people. First? Please do. Yeah, it's your turn to go first, Leash. Wait, is that what we're supposed to do, right? Celebrities. Yes, Yes, celebrities. Okay. Uh, Did I write this down? So I will say for reasons I can't explain, all my celebrities are actors. That's okay. I didn't, for some reason I didn't branch out into, I don't, I. It's okay. I guess there are other types of Canadians that are celebrities. Yeah. (laughs) So um, my favorite actor that's Canadian uh-huh. Um, is Seth Rogen? Oh, yeah, he's great. Also, he's so funny. I love his silly little laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he's just super funny. Yeah, and I think that like he would be friends with like anyone he met. Oh, maybe he's a jerk. Yeah. Maybe he is a jerk. But no, I don't think he is. I don't well, believe that. If he's, if he's a jerk, it's chill. probably because of the industry. And I bet he was pretty cool before he got yeah. super rich and famous. I just picture him as a, a pretty, pretty chill person who's yeah. really, like friendly to anyone and nice to so nice to everyone. I agree. Early early days of freaks and geeks, like he seemed like the sort of like person that that was just cool and chill. Yeah, but, I would I would I would say that. Uh, do you guys follow him on social on your social needs? Because I don't. I don't follow him. Oh, I well, should follow him. He's one hundred percent. You might. He's a delight. He has been. I just don't follow him for for a long. He's, no, it's okay. That's all, also okay. Well, let, let, let us share with you about some of his little factoids. Yes. Yeah. One thing that he's been doing a lot of late in the in recent. I don't know if it's years. I only recently started following him a few months ago. Um, he's up big into pottery. He's been doing wheel thrown ceramics, and they're really delightful. And he does a lot of amazing surface decoration with really oh. brilliant colors. I love them. Did he, he get into this great. like during quarantine? Like, is this his thing? Like, I don't or is he know. Doing this for I w- years. I I almost wondered if he'd be. I, you know what? I should have looked into it more. I just was delighted to see that he was doing it. It may have been a recent thing, or it may have been he's been yeah. up to it for years, and it's just maybe just gotten more famous for it lately. But it's really great, and he's delightful. Oh. I just remember seeing him on Billy on the street and he just seemed so charming and like kind of just quiet and nice. And these people were like, and, and you know how Billy like takes people around and he's like shouting at people. And it's like, meet yeah. Seth Rogen. And he's like, and he's like, uh, uh hi. Or he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's just like, hi. I, you just can tell nice. a lot of, a lot by, by people and how they contrast to Billy Eichner. I think that's a, <laughs> yes. Billy Eichner's that's a good litmus test. Billy on people. the street persona is definitely pretty intense. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, his regular persona, his normal Billy Eichner, is also pretty. Oh, intense, but yeah. I love Billy Eichner. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely amplified Billy. for Billy it's, on the yeah, street that's for true. sure. That's true. Um, but yeah, but Seth Rogen, oh, what a great celebrity! That's a great, that's a great select. I, yes. I definitely saw him on the list. Like him, and I'm, I read about him. He, um, he's a Alzheimer's disease raising awareness oh, person that's cool um, he, that's like he believes in a lot causes. of really progressive nice issues oh. and so it sounds like he's yeah. a good person yeah um, trying to improve I like that about him oh. and he's, he's on the right funny. side of history yeah, yeah. Oh. i think he's i think he's probably a good person i like it i like him <laughs> there you go based, based on my my judging of, and, and of he's people also, that i don't yeah. know been quite a lot of fun in a lot of movies that i enjoy yeah so that's good too. yes so many good sure. movies and some of them that he like like American Pickle is a wonderful little silly movie, which I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen that yet, and it's just perfectly perfect. Oh, perfect perfectly perfect pickle okay. movie! I want to see it. Um, I want to see it. Yeah, do, I, I don't know. Do, do, do. That's you don't that's have to. You don't have to defend Seth no. Rogen. No, he's yeah. a very yeah, likable character. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen's a wonderful person. <laughs> oh, yeah. End. Moving, moving on. Where there's no question, let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so, JB, do you want to go next? Oh, Share yeah, sure. A celebrity. Um. So my first celebrity, um, I already mentioned her, but I'm going to mention her again um, because I have a theme here with my top three celebrities. So this was the person I consider my movie mom. She's the person when I think of like, who is exactly who is the best (laughs) mom? Um, Believe it or not, despite her, despite her inability to count children correctly. Kevin McAllister's mom, played by Catherine O'Hara, is awesome. Oh, so she has had just one heck of a career. Yes. I obviously loved her in Home Alone, but 
frankly, it's all the Christopher Guest movies that I really love oh. Catherine O'Hara for. Oh. Um, she's had some in- just incredible, like the, the improv that they do in those movies is unreal. Um, I'm trying to think of like which character was, was she, was she in Best in Show? I'm pretty sure she was, oh. right? I, you know what? I haven't seen, I need to see all the Christopher Guest movies because you know what Christopher Guest movie I'm familiar with the most is a movie that he is in and didn't direct or write, oh. which is Princess Bride. <laughs> I was going to say Princess Bride, right? Yeah. Because so I don't think he's been in much. Right? <laughs> See, that's the thing. And I feel like I'm missing out because there's so many cultural touchstones, like um, Turn It Up to 11. Of course Best in Show. Yeah, Best in Show, cookie. yes. She was all done up with her. Yeah, she was one of the handlers in <gasps> Best in Show. Yeah. And a Mighty she, Wind. Yeah, a Mighty Wind. Like, oh, man. Yeah. She's, like, I'm picturing her in that one about the the home for Purim where they like were trying to get into the... Uh, uh, for your consideration, I think is what that one's called. That People didn't see that one because like... You know, it was not as good as the rest. But oh, she was great. Oh, for, well, it's for okay. Consideration. I'm sure it was still good. I just love all the Christopher Guest movies. So ah. that's all. And Catherine Hare is great. And and she was in Schitt's Creek. And I just remembered how much I loved her after watching that. And show. Beetlejuice. And Beetlejuice, like uh, yes, she, she's Lydia's <laughs> mom. She spanned decades Dylan. and decades of of Dylan. my favorite things. Yes, Dylan. I'm gonna stop here. She's in a ton Matt of Dylan. stuff. A ton of really good stuff. She was also in that not so great movie. Um, um, which is an adaptation of Over the Hedge. The book, she played a hedgehog. Um, where the Wild Things Are. Oh, <laughs> she was in that? I didn't yeah, remember. She's that. the voice of Judith. She was the voice. Okay. One of the monsters. Oh. She was one of the monsters. That's so yeah. cool. Oh, I would have loved to be a monster. That's a great. Voice. Oh, what a great, great casting. Mm. And she's a great she was monster. In, um, let me just confirm before I'm. Yep, she was in Nightmare Before Christmas. She was Sally. I mean, yeah, she was Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. No way! She was Sally, I are you am, kidding? I don't you mean like look at this main, look essentially this. main character Sally? Mm-hmm. That's and awesome. She was also Shock from Lock, Stock, Lock Shock, and, and Barrel. Barrel. Oh, oh wow! And Barrel. Lock, can, Shock, and Barrel. And Barrel. And Barrel. <gasps> I can picture Lock, her voice Shock being able to do that. Oh my gosh, that's fan art that needs to happen. I'm writing it down. Oh my gosh, she's been in so many things. Wow. She was in the Adams Family 2019. What is that? Is that a cartoon or is that a? Uh, Did they do a re-release of the sh- like a re? Maybe it was like a voice Reimagine? actor. I don't know. She does a lot of voices too. She yes, does everything. She true. does it all. She has such a distinctive voice, and she can do so much with her voice. Yeah. Oh, good pick yes. for sure. Yeah. I mm. like it. Oh man. So, if it's my turn, I'm gonna yes, introduce. I might be introduce- introducing you oh, guys she did to curb some. Curb your enthusiasm too. <gasps> I remember her as Bam Bam. <laughs> curb funny. your enthusiasm. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. I've actually oh, never watched was... that show. What? I know. What kind of Jew am I? Anyway, I want to hear what, what Sarah's surprise. Oh, we've never oh, heard oh. of this person. Yes. Character. So oh, I'm going to introduce person. you to some YouTube people you should check out. And oh, okay. Oh, first of these is Julie Nolke, who is a comedian and actor. And she is. Why are you guys shaking your meat sticks at me? This is really unnormal. <laughs> I'm this... For those watching, yes. we actually mean salami whips. For salami whips. Watching. Are we supposed to be meat sticks? <laughs> They're I'm like, doing they do look like. But either way, um, yeah, check out Julie Nolke on YouTube. She is really Julie cool, Nolke. very funny. and How do you has, spell her name? Uh, let me make sure I'm spelling her name correctly. I believe it is Julie, J U L I E. And Nolke is N O L K E. Um, and I think her YouTube channel is just under her name. Let me double check, make sure I'm not crazy. Yes, it's just under her name. Mm-hmm. She has loads of cool sketches. Hey, you busy? She's had some really funny ones what? that are um, her COVID connected videos that are relatable. Have her, her, her visiting herself from the future with oh, news that, of- I've seen oh. those videos. Yes, I didn't know that was her. Yes, okay. th- that's Julie Nolke and she's great. And um, I found out about her from Tim. I want to see. Always finding, oh yeah. Julie Nolke. It, yes. She did that like early in the pandemic. She was like, would you believe the wildfires were not the worst thing to happen this year? And I just remember- <laughs> oh. like, Yeah. And there was April or May when that came out. And she's, she's done a few of those, but she has a lot of other videos that are worth yeah. checking out. She's really funny, really goofy. I think when I think of um, the possibility it makes, when I watch those videos, I think of uh, Leisha's vision to have the we're funny comedy videos on <laughs> to make. That's what I think of. I'm like, oh, it's very cool. Very fun. Very relatable and very silly and just full of goodness and a good heart looking, good, doing things the right the right way, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Really mm-hmm. I like that. That's yeah. a great thank you. Thank you, Sarah. You definitely introduced me to someone I've never heard of, Yay. but apparently had heard of, just didn't know her name. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's kind of exciting. Yeah. So you did know her after all. And now we're <laughs> circling back, circle back to Leash for the Leash. next pick. Is it Leash? Okay. I'm out of order. Yeah. Oh, it is. Leash. Okay. When you're ready. 
We can keep chatting. So this person that I am, I am, I am spotlighting, <gasps> um, recently passed away. Oh no! Which is very sad. So sad. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but he, um, was just like a staple in American Americana. When I think of like things that are American. Oh. Um, and that is the show Jeopardy. Oh. <gasps> and he is oh, Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek is yeah. perfect he is choice. Just, like, He's really been like a really important part of I think our American culture for yeah. decades, and I'm sorry he passed away. Um, <sighs> but I have a lot of fond memories of watching the show with my family, and like yeah. my mom tried to get on the show. <gasps> she missed by one question no. to get on the show. Yeah, so she, she did the whole like test and stuff, and she 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 went to I think she had to go to like I don't know some different state in northeast oh <laughs> you know, yeah, she you traveled it's kind of like an it open... might have been connecticut for all i know <laughs> oh my goodness my sister-in-law also she took the test to get on and i thought she made it into the pool but she never got picked oh in the pool so yeah mm. it, it's just a it's a, it's a wonderful show he yes was, he'll definitely yeah. be missed and then oh, he also sure. did like the aarp commercials that i remember about. oh my gosh um but he is Oh. I just remember when he told us yeah. that he told he told me personally he told Leash that oh. he had cancer and oh. we were I, all rooting for him. Yes. I know I bawled my eyes out when I heard about that because oh. he's um, yeah he's he's a, an American and Canadian legend. Yes, and treasure. yes, yes. Oh yeah, and it's just a a nice solid like a peaceful strong voice that was just always yeah. supportive and I loved rational. Yes, just a rational yeah. mind, you know. Oh. A... Um, I recently he was the answer to a like a, a, a trivia question I, I heard recently, and I uh -huh. was like, "Who are they talking about?" Because they just talked about we love him with or without a mustache, and I was like, "Who on earth is that?" But it's true, <laughs> we loved him with or without his mustache. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the few people. Wrong. One of the few people who is never like yes. any like drama or like controversy with Alex Trebek that I'm yeah. aware of. No, I, I mean maybe maybe there was, but whatever it is didn't stick because he's Alex Trebek. So yeah. Who knows? His goodness. There's went always out. drama when you when you deal with game shows and you know people. Ooh, but... Game show drama. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's also just mention like uh, you know Will Ferrell's. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, Celebrity Jeopardy interpretation Celebrity of Jeopardy, yes. impersonation. So yes. funny. Yeah. And can we also talk about the whole repeated segment in one of our favorite movies, Groundhog Day, that had a whole like. <gasps> oh, like, what is Mexico about? <laughs> knowing oh, 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 right. Oh, because he, he memorized the answers. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. Oh. No, I mean, it's, it's just infused in I mean, so many wonderful yeah. Yes, it's memories. true. He's like a staple. I remember the movie She's All That. There was like a whole scene that had Jeopardy. Like the dad was like getting all the answers wrong in Jeopardy. And it's hilarious. That's um, so funny. Yeah, Jeopardy's everywhere. It's Permeated true. our pop culture. Which means Alex Trebek is everywhere. What a great idea, Leisha. Yes, <laughs> lovely pick. Thank you. What a sweet, heartwarming pick. I love. Hashtag love it. Um, JB, so JB. I can go with my next one, yes. and Alicia, as you were describing him, I thought you were going to talk about my next person, which oh. is um, everyone's favorite TV dad, Alan Thick. Oh, Alan Thick is more than just the TV dad on Growing Pains. He wrote a lot of your favorite TV sitcom theme songs that <gasps> you had no idea he wrote. No, tell me what TV <gasps> sitcom writer? I don't remember off the That's top okay. of my head. But I'm he wrote he wrote a lot of music for like. Just for, for, yeah, for just 80s, 90s. That would be where Robin television. got it from, I guess. That's yeah, so yeah the music is in the family wow. for sure. Um, and I love sitcom I'm themes. Look this up. Oh, um, yeah, I please. Think, so I, I grew up watching Growing Pains, like, you know, say what you will about Kirk Cameron these days, but the show was so special to me. It was like, it just, it was better than Full House. It was just the, the right kind of family dynamics that I understood and loved. And um, different strokes, see. facts of life. The different facts strokes. Of life. He will of fortune. Wizard of Odds. What? Oh, it's so game show themes. <laughs> yeah. Joker's <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Joker's Wild. Yeah, I don't Celebrity know. Celebrity Sweepstakes. I don't know these games. <laughs> <laughs> Joker's Wild, I think I've heard before. And the original theme to Wheel of Fortune. Okay, it was the original. I thought uh, the list was longer for sitcoms, but I'm only seeing the two there. That's okay. But those are good ones. Yeah, Facts of Life. Yeah, that's definitely that, that very distinctive for sure. That's, like that one will will live in in forever infamy. The Facts of Life one, I think. Uh, for... And different strokes, honestly. Those two are really more different strokes. of the same caliber, frankly. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, What's the different strokes song theme theme song go like? The different strokes. Yeah. Different strokes. Different strokes. 
Different strokes, cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Different strokes rule the world. I don't know the word. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, I, I think that's it. That's cool. Awesome. I, ha I mean, I, I play it, but you won't be able to hear it if I play it. So. Oh, no, it's okay. I'll just hear I it can look it up holes. on my own time. On my the own Wizard time. of Odds. That's so funny. I've never heard of that one. That's got to be a sitcom. Um, I mean, a <laughs> that's got to be a sitcom. That's got to be a game show. show. Game show. And Blank Check. Blank Check. That feels like I might have seen that on USA Network and syndication at some point in my <laughs> young life. And some show called Woo! W-H-E-W! -E exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> Woo! Man, now I want to see that show. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Good I, job. I'm, and I'm sure there's more than that. Like It just says the 10 best ones that he wrote. The one I'm, the thing I'm looking at right now. So I'm sure he wrote lots of stuff. But um... Oh, wait. Best TV theme songs. Best TV. Uh, nope, it's just gonna keep listening to the same same stuff. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. That's but okay. he's great. Yeah. I don't think. He's a, another Canadian treasure as far as I can tell. Canadian mm -hmm. treasure. I don't think. Yes, absolutely. Rest in peace. It was very heartbroken. Yes, another peace. death that struck me and I remember where I was when I heard and it was sad. Yes. I, I straight up cried. I couldn't believe it. Nick was like, why are you crying? I was like, because he was my TV dad. Like, oh, I was really yeah. upset about oh, it. You had your TV mom and your TV <gasps> dad. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Catherine Harris is like movie mom and are Alan Thicke was a TV, TV sibling dad. Next? Oh, You'll find out what my next oh, category is. Yeah. Or TV we'll grandma. There. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, too. That I don't know if she's Canadian, though, so I'm not going to mention her. <laughs> well, allow me to enter. Oh, you already have one. Oh, oh I mean. I do have a TV grandma, but I don't think she's Canadian. Oh, that's okay. She, they it's don't Mona. Have Canadian. It's Mona from Who's the Boss. Just Mona for today's episode. Boss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. We know the answer now. <laughs> oh, well, and I will share another go, yeah. YouTube celebrity that I find that is definitely someone I enjoy watching. And I think our listeners that are interested in video games would like him as well. It's Nitro Rad. And he does a lot of kind of... Uh, not kind of videos a lot of videos about video games talking about his favorite video games and a lot of often a lot of fun production on these videos um he's done some other little comedy sketches that are awesome and good but yeah check out nitro rad for more video game details and de like review type things he's talked about like series like even going back at like reviewing frogger games from mm -hmm. having all the iterations of frogger which i didn't even know there were more contemporary frogger games some of them look painful to play but yeah. he treats all the media with a with an interesting eye and also a good sense of humor i really like nitro rad so check him out yeah the, the newer froggers are like weird three-dimensional it's i, I it, like you're literally crossing a street and it sounds terrifying right yeah they're like more like 3d platformers and yeah. they're they're not necessarily only about crossing the street but it yeah, is yeah. Okay. definitely more involved than the classic can you jump across this river and cross the street <laughs> Uh, without getting run over. Yes, definitely exactly. very different. <laughs> but yeah, so now we're back to Leash for number three. Yeah. Okay, so the next one, I I didn't intend to have a theme between um, my second and third, um, but now that I'm thinking about it, we have to go back to um, just having a connection to the Murray brothers. <gasps> So, oh, oh! <laughs> so as I mentioned, Groundhog Day and Alex Trebek and mm -hmm. and um, Jeopardy with Bill Murray. This one, this um, actor actually featured Brian Doyle Murray in one of his movies. Ooh, okay. Um, this oh. person <gasps> started out on Saturday Night Live. Well, oh. I don't think he started on Saturday Night Live, but he was on Saturday Night Live. Uh -huh. That's yeah. where I was familiar with him first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Super funny person in my childhood. Yeah. Really yeah. enjoyed pretty much every movie that he made yep. growing up as a kid. Um, so I Married an Axe Murderer is one of the best movies <laughs> that he ever yep. made. Yes, yep. um, so fun. And his name is Mike Myers. And Heard of him. He was super, super funny. Oh. And Wayne's World was the movie that had Brian Durrell Murray. Yes. And um, just really, really silly, funny guy. And I yes. appreciated yeah. him in my childhood. And I don't know what he's doing right now. Like, I haven't really seen anything recently, but um, I'm sure whatever he's doing is probably something funny and silly and fun. Yes, I bet you're right. He's probably doing something whimsical and goofy. He was playing a character hosting a real game show. That was the last thing I heard about him doing. Oh. Like he was he was playing like an, like an affected hey, this sort of game show host. But it was like a legit game show. I, I, it was something that was on network TV in the last couple of years. I forget what it, what it was, but oh. um, I, that's what I've been told. He was just he was like full in on the on the on the bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it was it was like legit Mike Myers 
hosting a, it was, that was a weird concept in that way because it was like he's hosting a real game show but he's playing a fake person <laughs> you know that that's how he is yeah. he's, he's he's layered ah. yeah one yeah. might say he's, uh, he's like an onion he's got layers like the ogre like shrek Oh, like the Sh like, like yeah, like yeah. the like the Shrek character yeah, he may he's, have he's played made some for not many years. great movies in his life too. He's made a couple of mistakes. I, oh? I would say even like Love the, Guru. I, oh, the Love sure. Guru the was definitely on the bottom ever of the... made and but um, he's infamous the for Cat Austin in the Hat Powers also and Shrek. Wasn't a wonderful movie, but like yeah, Austin Powers, um, <sighs> all the Austin Wayne's Powers. Worlds, obviously. Wayne's World. um, so I Married an Expert is definitely one of my of all time. That's a good movie. It's so silly, so good. Harriet. Da, 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 Harriet. Da, da, da. Harriet. 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 <laughs> Hid. Move. Uh, oh, and he played he like his, didn't bastards. he play his parents in that yes. movie? Like he played yeah, he was a, he was Scottish a, accents and stuff. Oh. In Inglorious Bastards, and the role that he oh. took was originally offered to Simon Pegg, which is oh. weird. So interesting. I forgot to, about him in that bits. movie. It was a small. You don't think about comedians in that movie. Yeah, that's true. It's hard to. Cool. It's it, that's why comedians are so versatile because you see that happen a lot. That comedian takes a serious role and does a great job. It's cool. Yeah. It's pretty great. Pretty neat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So wait, are we on JB? Yeah. Yeah. JB. So for number three. You, you guys would probably not be expecting this one because it's not, not a sibling. I know, and you've thought about. It. Um, it's no. So this this category is my first uh, TV and movie crush. Aww. So this actor has been in some of my favorite movies as a kid and uh -huh. some of my favorite shows as a teenager. Okay. That's some pretty decent stuff in my adulthood as well. Um, you might remember him as Charlie Conway in the Mighty Ducks movies. You might remember him as Pacey in Dawson's Creek. You might remember him as all kinds of other stuff since then. <laughs> it's Joshua Jackson. Oh, you guys never saw Mighty Ducks? I saw the Mighty Ducks, but I don't remember what he looked like. Let me look. Ah, uh, Charlie Conway, he was the main character. I will have to look up. Um, he was he was Johnson the one that Emilio Jackson, Espes... Jackson. Jackson. Joshua Jackson. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. I looked up Charlie Conway. Joshua Jackson. He was in the show Fringe. If you ever watched Fringe. Oh yeah, Fringe. That was a okay. Not okay, great that, show. That, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I love that show for reasons. Um, but no, he, basically, he was very important to the first twenty years of my life. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking. Um, I'm looking. He was also in D2, The Mighty Ducks. Oh. He was in all the all three Mighty Ducks movies because he was the main kid. Uh, that's Charlie so Conway. funny. I love it. <laughs> He's I in see. Ocean's Eleven. Oh. Oh yeah, he, he was playing himself. Yeah, <laughs> oh. it was like him and Ashton Kutcher playing poker with George Clooney. That's movie, yeah. funny. Well, yeah. Hmm. Good hmm. job. Well, hey, some people have been in things, and I have to say it. He was also in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, apparently. So maybe I saw oh, him there. He was. I don't remember yes. him. <laughs> he was a one-off character in one episode named Purvis. Okay. Purvis, that's so funny. I don't remember. I don't remember that whatsoever. Well, but yeah, more recently he like he played he plays a lot of lawyers lately. Oh. now that he's like in his forties, they can pull off playing lawyers. He's a lawyer-looking <laughs> man now in his older yeah. in his forty-year-old years. Forty-year-old years. Exactly. That's exactly. cool. Oh, that's hmm. great. Well, that's really sweet. I love that you incorporated your childhood crush into your list. That's so sweet. <laughs> so you have mom, dad, and crush. Yeah. The most important. I have, I have enough brothers. I don't need a TV brother. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> like, should you know? Well, no more. Thank you. <laughs> Did you, you didn't have enough parents? <laughs> well, we wouldn't have to go there. <laughs> she wanted to have fantasy parents because that would be extra fun. Maybe. I mean, she's a kid. I get it. Yeah. Seemed like good parents to have at the yeah. time. What are you going to do? Yeah, I it's agree. Not, yeah. It's not get into my psyche, guys. No, 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 no. It's your <laughs> You're perfectly perfect. Rar, what you got? I have a fun one to share. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nardwar, the human serviette. You can see his videos on YouTube. He is what? a delight. Okay, yes. The crazy name. That's not his real name. He does have you his... Don't, you don't say. Yeah. That's his, oh that's his stage name. He's also a musician. Uh, but what he, yeah. what Nardwar is most famous for is doing interviews with famous musicians. And it's like usually like anyone from like, I mean, he's done ones with uh, Tyler, the creator. He's interviewed like I think recently he did uh, an interview with Billie Eilish. The whole thing is that he does these wonderful like oh, yeah. in-person interviews where he just basically um, asks them questions that are about like themselves of course you know usual questions but he will bring up things from their past that they thought they didn't know 
or that they thought were like not commonly known so like bring back like their favorite old things they might be referencing like an old album and he'll actually give them these gifts of things that are just like touching and heartwarming to them and they're like oh my god how did you know about this this is crazy how did you know um and it's just yeah. really fun and charming he's very like kind of um i guess not self-effacing but kind of goofy and kind of just silly and i don't know um oh does it so this is a character though right this is a, i guess it is a character but he is such he it, it is his like uh interview persona that he interviews right. these people like and, like like an ali g sort of thing like that's his persona yeah, kind of. interviewing people yeah, so I'm, this reading, is I'm reading about him he <laughs> it says that due to his absurd and eccentric style he has been attacked verbally physically threatened and intimidated by people such as sebastian bach of skid row the band <laughs> quiet riot um Sonic Youth and Dave Roundtree of Blur. Well, I gotta say, those people just must be kind of jerks, but I don't, I mean, because... Well, Nardwar they did stole not understand. Sebastian Bach's favorite toque. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his favorite toque. That's a toque. hat. That's a, that's a, a it's a hat. I that's, just learned that. Yes. Like yesterday. Which is very relevant to this discussion because of Canada. Yeah. So it's like a, a lovely hat. It's usually a, a, it's like a beanie that has a, a pom-pom on it often. Or I don't know yeah. if it needs to have a pom-pom on it. Pom -pom. Quiet Riot chased Nardwar and yeah. crew down the street. Well, that is very weird, and I'll have to look into that. But in general, I feel his interviews are well received, and they always end with him saying, "Doot doot loot doot," and it's given up to the other the interviewee to say "doot doot," and then like Nardwar will freeze in place and not move. And until it gets awkward and strange and the video just will cut out. Because it's like, basically, how long can the interviewee stand oh, not moving or interacting? In st it's it's worth checking out. He interviewed Guar. And yes. oh, yes. I believe it. Guar yeah. tried not to laugh while in character. <gasps> oh, see, it's great. They're really That's worthwhile. It's, yeah. Check it out. Oh, check out Nardwar so and watch them yeah. and enjoy all of his amazing, delightful interviews. They're silly. They're heartwarming a lot of the time, I think, because it, it does show these interviewees some fun things and that they're i don't know it's great yeah so that's my third celebrity that i want you to huh. see can i toss out a few honorable mentions yes you may so i didn't bring any of them up in this but Catherine o'hara was part of sctv so the sctv crew including rick moranis and dave thomas as mm. bob and doug mckenzie yes bob and uh, doug mckenzie Levy, of course hard. john candy and Martin Short were all part of SCTV. And Ed Grimley, I must say. Oh. They were just, they were the early days and some of them ended up over in, you know, American shows and obviously SNL for some. And Martin I mean, Rick Short Moranis, come on. Hat. Rick Moranis was very important to all of us until, you know, he, he retired from acting. Oh, he does yeah. songs. Like, he does? Well, he has a Jewish album. It's a... <laughs> He also did some songs. Oh, Hanukkah album, I think. Yeah, it's a Hanukkah ah, album. So, also some that. songs when he was with Bob and Doug McKenzie as well. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, and, um, um, I have a couple more um, yeah. um, honorable, honorable mentions. mentions too. And that is um, William Shatner <gasps> and Jay Baruchel. Yes, Jay oh, Baruchel yeah. also um, in my heart, an honorable mention. Yes. I also have a, few, a, few, a few women I'd like to mention as well. There's Cree Summer from Oh my gosh, the voices. A different world. All the voices. Well, different world. I know her for, uh, from a different world, but yeah, she's been a million and one voices. You'll know her face from a different world, but yes. you will know her voice from so many cartoons. Like literally everything. <laughs> she's great. Um, I can't even name them. There's so many. Um, there's also Rats. Rachel she's McAdams, Sandra O. Oh. <gasps> Sandra O. Oh. Um, yeah. Who am I looking at? Oh, and then. Hey, uh, um, uh, Michael J. Fox. Don't forget about Michael J. Fox. Oh, yeah. From, I was gonna say from Growing Pains. I was like, no, that's Family Matters. No, nope. and then nope. I Family have no ties. Idea that... <laughs> Sorry. From the werewolf movie. <gasps> Teen Wolf. And then, yeah, then, exactly. Or Back to the Future. And Back, or to, the back to the Future. Just Which is also a werewolf that, that movie. Little, and also that other stuff. Movie. And Back to the Future. And um, <laughs> Spin City. Spin City. Spin City. Spin City. <laughs> um, and then Elliot Page, formerly Ellen Page, is Canadian. I had no idea. Ah, um, uh, Canadian. I, I literally just assume he was american so um found that on my list many many times and i was like right 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 yep that's everyone that is cool that oh, Ke named. and keanu reeves <laughs> oh yes keanu reeves keanu also keanu reeves. written reeves. in my list oh yes. yeah lots Wonderful. of honorable mentions yeah nosh and facts <gasps> nosh and facts nosh and facts nosh and nosh so in facts <laughs> it's your life yay <laughs> so um since you guys had the what were they? What whip? What type of whip are they? 
These are called salami whips. Ooh, salami whip. Oh, it's these, got crazy dates. These salami whips, I'm just, I'm going to read the, the description of them. I'll send it to you guys, actually. Okay. Oh, um, wow. Authentic, it says authentic European style salami, but it is made in Canada, oh, so that's how I ended I up buying it. I didn't realize it was one big loop. It's yes. a whip, so it's really long and folded in half, wow. I guess. I don't understand. This is amazing. Um, yes, it's very... semi-dry cured old forest. What? It's an it's really old good. forest. I thought that's it was it meat. It's just, it's just meat. It's good. And it's, it's and properly... I don't typically like jerky style stuff. Do you like Slim Jims? Because that's kind of a different than mm. jerky this is making this is me think good. slim jim this is better than slim jim it's not as salty actually so Ooh, yeah. this it is like a salami. funny treat it tastes like a really smoked salami mm. i'm gonna save the rest of it but mm. oh yeah, yeah. that's delicious salami candy cane <laughs> it's got a good smoky flavor i agree yeah mm. Mm, I like mm, the mm. Slim Jim I find thick they're thicker, right? I like that this is a thinner um, whip. I don't know. I thought they're about the size, but maybe. I think they're a little bit thicker. Mm, yeah, I've yeah, only yeah. had Slim Jim so many times. It's usually oh, when I'm like legit Slim Jim. desperate. <laughs> they're good. I, don't know. I like Slim a beef Jim stick. like they have like a smoother shell as well. Ooh. I, I wonder if it's a residue on my fingers. I don't know. Does it's it say wacky. does it say what the casing is made out of? Is it all natural casing? Is it vegetable casing? do they have vegetable um, casing? In vegetable casing. Oh, yep. There you go. Very good. It's delicious and tasty. I like it. It's a beet. And it's a product of Pillars Fine Foods in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Very tasty. Nice. I liked it. Thank you for that salami whip. Delicious. What's what else should we so, try? Um, we have we still have some various chocolate bars left, and we have Leisha's homemade, and then we have the little cakes as well. Oh my gosh, that's right. We have all the chocolate bars and the cake. Oh, I want the I want all the things. Should we? I don't know. What's a good after salami thing? Maybe we should pop into one of the cakes or the coffee crisp bar. Cake. I say cake. 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 Yes. Cake. So cake. I just learned about the the, the Joe the juice. Jos Louis. Jos. So how is that? Do tell us. Do did you happen to look up how to say it? Looks it looks like a whoopie pie. I did not or look up how pie. to say it. Moon pie. I, I'm gonna assume it's a Jos Louis or Jos Louis. Jos cake. Louis. And yeah, it looks like a moon pie or like um, like little Debbie's almost, but it's red velvet inside. Mm. Yes. I was this trying to see. Opening has it. fallen apart. Are they all red velvet inside, mm -hmm. or just this one? Well, oh. the examples I saw were all red velvet. Huh. Ooh, and this is another one that you can get from Canadian Lunch. Mm -hmm. Using Pocket Pod 10. Oh, wait, let me pop that up. This is so good. Pocket Pod 10 for 10 I knew it would be good just by looking at it because it, 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 it's basically like a, well, yeah, like a hostess cake. Well, Moon Pies have That's marshmallow good. on these. This is a cream filling. This is cream. This is more like, like the, yeah, like mm. a hostess cupcake. It's more like a hostess. Oh my gosh. Like a ho-ho style. Mm -hmm. A ho-ho, that's the one. I can never remember which one's a ding-dong, which one's a ho-ho. Those are those are my favorite kind. The, the, and also uh, the ho-ho, the um, yodels. Drake's company makes a yodel, I think. It's the same thing. Oh, it's yeah. delicious. Swiss cake roll also. Yeah. That family. Mm. But this, this is very good. It's really light cake. I like it. And the, the red velvet's delightful. And these were invented in 1932. I'm reading this from the box. Invented in 1932 because Rosa, excuse me, Rose Anna Vachon came up with an idea to cut her cakes using the lid from a container of baking powder. And the <laughs> jo, mm -hmm. Jose yeah. Louis was born. Or Jose well, Louis. I'm Here's getting chocolate delicious. crumbs everywhere now. These are very good. I have strong feelings about red velvet in general and that I think it's a huge waste of time, personally. But I think that this is still delicious in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree. Red velvet doesn't seem worth it because I don't think you, it really adds flavor at all to anything. No. It's just pretty. Mm. But hey, if you're going to make it, I'll eat it anyway. I'm just not going to ever go through the effort of making it myself. Ooh, right. I do like that uh, red velvet cakes often have cream cheese icing, which I'm a fan of. That usually is the, the big selling factor for red velvet for me. And that is a, a, an underwhelming <laughs> reason for... I, I prefer buttercream to... Cream cheese, so mm. unless it's on a carrot cake, because Ooh. carrot cake needs cream cheese, obviously. I Yum. I um, generally prefer chocolate or uh, cream cream cheese frosting over buttercream. It's oh. just a texture thing for me. To each their own. Exactly. So, Yum. But, but generally speaking, if there's like a, a red velvet something and a something else, I'm probably going to pick the something else. That said, yeah. this is really delicious. Yeah, very good. It's very soft. 
Like it's not a dense cake at all. It's very fluffy. Very light, light. and fluffy. I agree. Mm. And the chocolate and is good, and the cream is good. I really want to eat all of it, but I'm trying hard not to. Oh, I ate the whole thing. Canada, Goodbye. It wasn't I ate that one. Mm. It would come in one piece. Oh, good. Nice. Mine was just a little bit crumbly. Oh yes, sorry. And it was funny because like the cake, I could tell there must have been an impact on the box because like one half of the box. <laughs> What was like kind of crushed. So we each got one that was like mostly whole and one that was all over. Okay. So, so the one I pulled out was the crumbly one. So the other whole one is here. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll enjoy that one as a whole later. Yes. You'll get to delicious. enjoy it. Yeah. Wonderful. Mine is kind of like crumbled, but it's still very good. Even with being crumbled. Delicious. Do we want to try one more thing and then we'll do three more on the next? Yes. Can we, can we try your bars, stuff? Leash? Mm. Do you want to try my bars now? Yeah. Yum. Yes. Like I yes like and yum. The, the cake and then the the, the sort of brownie-ish type thing. Yeah, well, I still have coffee. So, this is a good choice. So, Leash, will you tell us? These are called yes. Nanaimo bars. Nanaimo. Or Nanaimo. <laughs> so oh, they smell Nanaimo so good. Nanaimo because the A and the I are on the, the middle. Ah. Ooh. So, I think. But Ooh, I don't know for, for, for sure. Um, so, my little my little chef and Aww, I made little yesterday. chef. yesterday. And it's got coconut graham. So the bottom layer is coconut graham cracker and cocoa powder. It looks amazing. Egg, an egg. Okay. Yep. And maybe sh a I little. Got, sh I don't I got the coconut. I got there. the powder. I got the eggy. And essentially, you like put this in a double boil. You put the chocolate in a double boiler, mm. and then you mix the egg in, and mm. it kind of makes this custardy stuff. Mm. And then you mix in the rest of the ingredients, and then you mash it down into a plate. Or into the pan, Ooh, baby. and then the middle layer is custard powder, oh. butter, mm. and um, confectioner sugar. So it kind of makes like a buttercream. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you put that down. You let that f chill for a little bit, and then you can put this this chocolate and butter mixture on top. Wow. So that's it what is it is. Yum, delicious. That is delicious. Mm hmm. And you know, I don't usually like coconut, but you've done a great job masking it, and it's great. Mm. <laughs> I do like coconut, and I still enjoy these. <laughs> yeah, they're very good. So, like when when one has like a black forest cake, coconut is like too much. It like overpowers it for me mm. because this is like baked into the crust. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it at all. It's like a macaroon crust, right? Mm. And you can add almonds to the bottom layer, mm. although I did not, or some sort of nut if you wanted a little bit more, a little crunchier. Mm. But we went nut free. We went nut free. Yay! I appreciate um, that. That way, Timmy can have some too. Yeah. And I think you can eat them chilled or you can eat them room temperature. They're both This adequate. has been room temperature for the last few hours, and it tastes just as good as I imagine it would be cold. It's very tasty. I thank like it. Thank you for making these. Yes, leaves. thank you. This is, this. this is the one homemade item we have. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very good. Mm, mm, mm. Yum. So we have fun facts from Leash next. Yeah, mm -hmm. tell us your fun facts. Oh, are these also two true facts and one false fact? be great if she forgot to falsify one if they're just three true they're facts. They're all true. They're all true. Okay. Sounds great. <laughs> Two true facts and one false fact. Okay. These are all facts about bears. Ooh. I love Canadian, it. Canadian bears to be, to bears. be uh, exact. Let me read them. Go bears. Well, bears. Okay. Fact A. <laughs> fact one. Got it. Yes. Fact 1A. <gasps> Phase 1A. <laughs> Oh no, don't, don't, don't go there. I twitch it. Tier two? Tier two. <laughs> Tier two. Um, fact Excuse a. me. Sorry. Despite all appearances, polar bears are not actually white. Their skin is black and covered with dense underfur, which is protected by an outer layer of hollow, translucent guard hairs. It was guard once thought hairs? that the guard hairs acted as fiber optic cables Whoa. conducting light to the bear's black skin where it could be absorbed to maintain body heat. Oh. This is all one fact? That's one fact. One fact. Fact one. Okay. Ice fact bear. A. Fact A1, fact. tier two. Fact B. Okay. Fact B2, Ready. tier three. Studies have found white bears, like the polar bear and the kermode bear, also known as the spirit bear, are 30% more effective at catching salmon during the day than their black bear counterparts because their lack of coloring makes them less visible to the fish. Huh. <laughs> okay, I'm ready for fact <laughs> number three. Fact D. C. Black bears have a large vocabulary and use a variety of hums, 
grunts, and other vocalizations to communicate with the with each other. The most common word in black word in black bear vocabulary is the utterance a black bear makes upon emerging from hibernation that means it's time to release their fecal plug. Wow. <laughs> Man. So I read a very similar fact about black bears, but it was about baby belugas or beluga whales instead. Baby beluga. <laughs> had nothing to do with the had nothing to do with the with the with the with the fecal plug, but just the oh. way that they communicate with like oh. they're talking about how they communicate with each other using sounds. That's like, interesting. Wait, this sounds like the beluga fact. I'm intrigued. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm very confident that one is true. But it could there's, be there's parts of one that don't feel true well, the, but it's a, the, the whole thing is that it, the once believed part that could be anything like you could say that's true we once yeah, any believed, person could have believed it yeah, yeah that's so i don't know if that could be called out as false that would be yeah i mean i guess but it like, could be i i can tell you i know for a fact that that the, the first part of that one is yeah true, that's that true they're they which... dark bear, bears and the fur is more like a translucent thing yeah. which does make it um because we know that part is very true then it's a perfect place to hide a lie with that as well exactly <laughs> so the second like one like sarah did <laughs> <laughs> that's true this, the second one i know for a fact a spirit bear is real um because i read all about that um and what is the other name of the spirit bear kermode um, kermode. kermode i want to look it up but i don't i won't because i don't want to spoil myself that one's going to come up later in the in oh, my, in my okay. favorite animals thing spoiler alert um I've never yeah. heard of that bear, like Kermode bears. Yeah, no, I'd never bear. heard of it till I till I did some research hmm. on Canadian rare known community. Anyway, we'll get oh. there later. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm gonna select A because that, that whole fiber optic thing really just messed with me, and that could just be Leash messing with us because she she's good. I'm going to um, select. Uh, I'm going to go with C because or three. C or three C three. C-3PO because yeah. um, because of the most common one being when they come out of hibernation and I feel that that is impossible. How could that be the most common thing when you only come out of hibernation well, like once or twice? I don't know how often they, they come out of hibernation. Poop. Also, I don't they know. They poop. How often do they poop in hibernation? So I'll say that anyway. I'll go with three. C. What's the answer, Leash? So you said A and you said C. Yes. Yeah. The correct answer is C. Oh. Oh. And what was the, re what was the falseness in C? Um, I have no idea what the, their most common are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a, so. So we know that they make sounds. They make. They do make sounds. sounds. They do. Make but we don't know what their noises what that they're mean saying. different things. Like yeah, they okay. feel threatened or they feel whatever. Yes. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> they don't communicate that they're going to okay. release their butt plug. Their butt plug. That's so funny. Well done. Well done. I well love done it. sneaking that in. That was very cool. Um, and it was it was in fact once believed about the guard Harris acting as fiber optic cables. <sighs> Um, and it was disproven, I think they said in 1988. Oh, they proved it wrong. Ah, that, that was not okay. a thing to maintain Valley Key. And, and polar, oh, let me do a follow up. Oh, yeah. Um, I love it. Polar bears um, can become overheated at temperatures above 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, my goodness. In warm, moist conditions. And <gasps> their outer hairs can actually grow, turn green as a result of algae growing on the outside of the hollow tubes. Oh, that's like sloths can look green. So they're yeah. in common with our sloth friends. Interesting. That's interesting. so cool. Oh, good job, polar bears yeah. being all interesting. And I want to learn more <laughs> about the Kermode, aka Spirit mm -hmm. Bear. It sounds interesting. Well, this is a great lead into the fact that the next section is all about animals. <gasps> Yay! Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! Um, Sarah, what's your favorite? What's your What's your first favorite? My first animal. animal. Well, I would talk about the Canada Jay because I talked about yes. it before. So I will share that it is the unofficial national bird because for some reason that's just not something that uh canada's wanted to pick out i don't know why it's it's even named after your country make it official canada but they're very cute you know what hey trudeau get on it i know you're busy get <laughs> you on have it. other priorities now what i don't think it's as important as picking your national bird right mm -hmm. but yeah, i agree they're very cute they're little gray and white birds they have a little black bill they're very cute i should have put a picture in there sarah loves her Burbs, especially the Canadian ones. I love birds, including Canadian ones. It's true. You're not wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Who's next in the roundabout? Do you want to go next? Leash way. Speaking of birds. <gasps> oh, Yay. Oh. Let's speak of them. This is a, a very special bird to me. 
Oh. Um, they're not they're not exclusive to Canada. However, they are found in Canada. Um, mm-hmm. It is so prevalent and adorable <gasps> that Newfoundland or Newfoundland has adopted 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 Aww. them. This I want to adopt as some of these. Actually. provincial bird Ooh. and has several protected areas for the birds. To <gasps> nest. I think I know what you're gonna pick. Yeah. I know what you're gonna pick know because they're on my list too. I know what it is. And I know since I you know said Newfoundland, Newfoundland. Yeah. I really wanted to see them when I went to England and I oh, couldn't because yeah. the water Sorry. was too choppy. There's a little yeah. puffin friends. Yay! Oh, puffins, the Atlantic puffins. So sweet. Aww. They're very precious. When my when my grandma went to Newfoundland, um, when I was a kid, she she came back with like all these pictures of puffins and i just oh. i really wanted to go see them then we went to the zoo and we saw puffins at the zoo and it just wasn't quite the same no. oh was, they I have them want... in the the, the oh baltimore national aquarium yes what? but i wanted yeah. to go to the little them in reels. island and and see them in oh. northumberland and they and have take the ferry out there Maybe. they have them off the coast of maine here too and when i went to my friend's wedding her dad does tours <gasps> along the coast where you can see puffins what? it was like the middle of the summer and they just weren't really hanging out then oh, so what? i just i've never seen a puffin in person outside of like you know obviously at like zoos and whatnot but i want to see a freaking puffin oh you want to see a real life witness of a puffin or witness puffin in real life yeah maybe yeah. It, maybe some cold winter you'll see you can visit uh the coast in maryland and you'll see one that's wandered too far south oh <laughs> what a dream that would be i'll just go hang out on the coast a treat a treat in a dream. Sorry. Earthquake. Thanks for selecting Puffins Leash because I that didn't make my list, but not for lack of really loving them. But I just found really more in, like interesting weird ones instead. Yeah. <laughs> what you got? Speaking so of interesting and weird. Yeah. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the Kermode Spirit Bear. Yeah. Um, I just also discovered... on my list, so we can we can oh, cross, good. cross motion eat that guy. Yeah, I just discovered that they exist when I was doing my research, and and it, apparently so. I just I wrote oh. a whole note here is one of the rarest bears on earth. They are black bears that are white, thanks to a recessive mm-hmm. gene. They are about 100 to 500, which is a very broad range in British Columbia. Mm-hmm. And they're not albino bears. No. They are, right. in fact, um, just white bears. They still have pigment pigment in their skin and their eyes. Right. Yeah, because when, when you look bears. at the picture, they're like a little bit off-white. They're not like white, white, yeah. like polar bears. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. They're so beautiful. They're cuties. But it looks like yeah, it's they're a- really cute. It's a subspecies of a black bear, so they still yeah, have the correct. same genus and species name as the black bear, but they have yeah. Cromodiae, or Cromodiae, as their subspecies yeah. extension. Neat. Got it. Yeah. That's how they got their name. Cromode. Aww. Spirit bear. Spirit, Spirit bear. bear. Oh, Backseat driver. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> what's your next one? Really what's cute. One? Well... I had Puffin as well, so we talked about those guys. Yeah. They're very precious and sweet, and I love them. So I'll skip over to my mammal friend that is part of the weasel family. That is the Pine Martin. And they're not exclusively Aww. in Canada, but they're wonderful. They're like, they they're can like climb little trees. They're like little ferrets. Yes, they're like, and friends. they're like fluffier. They have a little, I think their fur is more fluffy. Sometimes they're called, they're, they're, they used to be hunted, or maybe they still are for their fur, because they're really mm-hmm. soft and beautiful. Mm-hmm. but they yeah they're really sweet i love that when they um they definitely have changing fur for the seasons i think in canada so i think some of them have more Makes like sense. yeah but i like their little like paler bellies Aww. they're so cute yeah they have like a mm. looks like a yellow collar that kind of goes all the way down to their bellies they're really sweet i like them a lot yeah. i like I all the weasel child, animals i had ferrets and my my <gasps> male ferret had male pattern baldness on his back oh poor it's a very bud. common thing i wonder if martin's also experienced maybe they do male pattern oh baldness. my gosh that'd be so cute well, on their backs, not on their heads. It's oh, like on their back. Little buddies. Little guys. They could have little um, pine martin wigs for accessorizing. <laughs> little, It'd be so cute. A little toupee. I like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But yeah, so pine martins are adorable. I like those. Yeah. Very cute. Oh, I've never seen these before. They're very cute. All right. What's your next one, Leash? Yeah. What you got? Well, this one is. Um, so we already talked about the Kermode, the Spear Bear. Yes. So amazing. Um, and we talked about my Puffin. So this yeah. one is a. is you know he's not he's nothing nothing to to you know he's just a normal little guy he's not very rare That's okay. um we've talked about him in pocket pot animal crossing before <gasps> um and that is our little beaver friend oh beaver. They're just the, i think they're really cute little guys they always look like they're sleepy um when i was a little kid um growing up in new york there was a little creek and one day I remember my dad was driving into town and we had to cross the little bridge of the creek and we saw like a beaver dam and he 
my dad was always like really big on like showing us nature and stuff because he lived awesome. in like rural New York. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I think I saw a beaver in that beaver dam. So he pulled over and we looked out, you know, we saw, and then we saw the little beaver and we named oh. him Bucky. <gasps> oh, Bucky. Bucky Beaver. Bucky, we would always, I mean, anytime we went over that bridge, we would stop and see if we could find Bucky and we, we would like just look and find Bucky. <gasps> And oh. it was just like a nice little time to see Bucky yeah. in my childhood. So that's super um, cute. Tribute to Beaver. And again, Beavers obviously live in America, like North, yeah. all of North America. Yeah. Most of North America. But they are the North America, Canadian, you know, the United symbol. States. But um, very, very, very cool little, little guy. Yeah. Um, who also lives in Canada. Aww. When I was reading about beaver, one of the descriptions I read was beavers are very industrious. And because they, they, they described how they build the dams, like because they, they build a whole canal so they can move all the wood into the yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and there's like a whole like little, <sighs> yeah, little tunnel infrastructure down mm -hmm. there. It's amazing. Very Pretty cool. smart. They are smart little industrious little guys with awesome mm -hmm. tails, which by the way, we haven't talked about that food yet, but you know, the beaver, the beaver tail food that we oh, tried yeah. to find, but oh, not find yes. in the U.S. anywhere. That we would love to try <laughs> if we can find it anywhere. So if you know where to get it in the Maryland slash D.C. area, let us know. Yes. <laughs> um, oh my, my next one is the Arctic hare. Oh, okay. Mm. So I was I was specifically looking for animals that are, that are rare and can mostly be found in Canada. They might not be exclusive, of course. Um, but the Arctic hare, shortened ears and limbs with a little small nose. Um, they have a thick coat of fur to keep them warm all through the cold, cold up north, northern winters. Like they do. And they're just super cute, Arctic hares. I mean, obviously, you know, it's hard to go wrong with a with a, with a bunny type animal. But uh, sure. I, I was like, you're adorable. So that's, that's my next pick, an Arctic hare. That Aww. is sweet. And I can add another animal in. Yeah. If you like, but speaking yes, of like kind of animals that are more rare and amazing, there's, you know me, I like birds. And there's one I bird that I, I think it was like my favorite bird for a really long time, especially when I was younger. It's this, it's a big, the, like one of the biggest falcons. It's called a jur falcon. And they live mm -hmm. in the more northern reaches. It's G-Y-R falcon. Uh, and they're beautiful. They almost look, they almost have like leopard spots on their back because it's like their wings have oh, been, yeah. these like black spots and they're very white and beautiful. Um, they just oh. look like they're made to be in snow and hunting for things in the snow. They're really cool looking like falcons. A snowy owl, like from oh. the side, it looks like a snowy owl. Yeah, they're very similar in that marking. So perhaps that's a good camouflage for hunters to have that yeah. kind of dappled spots, dappled really? spots. Yeah. But very yeah. pretty. So those are great. Some cool. great animals, guys. I love learning about these animals. And I still have one more. Oh, you do? Because I, I I had three different ones, and I know we had some repeats, but I still have a third one. Um, have you heard of the collared pika? A pika? That sounds like something that lives it's in a, rocks and yeah. is a rodent of some sort. It's a tiny mouse-like creature. <laughs> I didn't finish that sentence. <laughs> um, they prefer remote high altitude locations and they live in the mountains in the Northwest Territories. Oh. And it is as cute as it sounds. It's Aww. just this tiny little furball of a mouse-like thing. Sounds it's so sweet. Collared He's very pika. cute. How big is yes. he? Teeny. Teeny tiny. <laughs> Pocket size, maybe? Yeah. Big oh, pocket size? Little ears. They're kind of, well, they're not mouse. They're kind 7. of 7.4 inches leash. So, like, this big. Aww. They're this big. They're wee. 7.4 7. Not... 7. inches. Like, and do they, they have, have a little nubbin? Do they have a little like yeah. size of, like, a squirrel, maybe? Nubbin Probably. tails? Yeah. But if it's 7 they inches. Have little, they have little mouse faces and little mouse ears. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're so cute. Yeah, so those those were the those are the ones that because I, I was looking Very for ones cool. like I, I knew I knew we were gonna have some common like caribou and that one didn't come up but I, well, that was on are, my list. But I do have honorable mentions of the yeah. of the the traditionals as well. Oh yeah, um, lynx, <gasps> moose, yes. beluga, yeah, yeah. wolverine, beluga. caribou, arctic fox, and harp seal. Those are <gasps> yeah. like oh. such beautiful northern Amer North American animals that. I'm very appreciative that we have in our lives. Oh, yeah. even yeah. though I didn't mention any of them. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, th they all came on my list, but I thought they'd be more common. So I wanted to find <gasps> interesting different ones that I hadn't heard about. Just because they're common doesn't mean we don't love them. Just no, moose, exactly. moose are have like really interesting facts about them that I learned on Wildcrats once oh. um, about like their antlers and how their antlers are fuzzy and like, um, 
I think because they are antlers and not horns, they they lose them mm. and then they get them back. Yes. Which I didn't know about. I didn't realize that moose would also have. I guess it stands to reason, but like to me, I think like when I think of moose, I think they always have. Antlers. Yeah, they me never too. Not have antlers. I don't think about them <laughs> like, being I've never like not seen a moose without antlers in a picture. So right. Period. Anyway. I guess you wouldn't take a photo of them. They're not that impressive without it, which is ridiculous. Aww. I'm sure they're still very impressive. They're very big. That's another thing I learned about moose that they are much bigger than I think they are. <laughs> yeah, they, have a, they have a much. They have a really long face. Like moose mm-hmm. are big. Why the long face? Because I'm a moose. Why the long face? Bullwinkle. Oh. Oh, Bullwinkle. Famous moose. Bullwinkle. Is he um, Canadian too? <laughs> I mean, Fractured there's parents. Canadian hats and things in there, aren't they? I think they're a little bit Canadian. I don't know if the show's Canadian, but he certainly is. <laughs> yes, this is fair. Oh, man. Um, Are we done our animal should we, segment? Should we, should we take a food break? Yeah, I think it's time. Is this our final food break? This is our final food break. Final food break. Shoot, I should have gotten a knife for this, because I, I guess I can break off pieces of... I'll just break off chunks, because this is the candy bar. Candy and bar And by the way, time. I did look it up. They don't call them candy bars in Canada. They call them chocolate bars. Chocolate bars for all of them, even if they're not... Even if it's this original dark toffee peanut chew, it's still considered. So wait, what are we bar. eating? I'm I'm just opening the eat more dark oh, toffee yeah, peanut okay. chew. Eat more. That's my first one here. Oh, this is very peanutty. Ooh, baby. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna take a. Ooh, that's off. this is this is oh, chewy this is the too. Eat more chewy? bar. I just pulled it off, and it's see how chewy Ooh, it is. Looks amazing. I'm showing. I want to show. Looks like a caramel. <laughs> Oh, wow. It looks really good. It looks like super peanutty. This reminds me of like no bake cookies. Mm. The no bake cookies. Ooh. The chocolate peanut. Mm. No bakes. Yeah, yeah. You just put them in the fridge. Let me. them set up. Yeah. Then eat I know them. what you're talking about. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. It's very peanutty. It's like intensely peanutty. But if you're good. allergic to peanuts, this isn't the best choice for you. No, it's not. <laughs> Yes, please it please do not eat if you are allergic to peanuts. That would be very unsafe. In fact, the next one is also not appropriate because I'm going to open up the O. Henry. Oh, oh, yes, and thanks to Canadian Munch. Oh, I'll bring that out again. Ooh. Oh, yeah. We learned. Canadian Munch. No. Yes, yeah. that's Canadian Munch. We learned that O. Henry bars were discontinued in the U.S. a few years ago. Yeah. And that they are different than the Canadian O. Henry bars. Yeah, we wanted to compare and contrast, but we were sad to learn that we couldn't. Yeah, we were having a hard time tracking oh, those down. Those are- these are even more peanutty because they have the little chunky peanut mm. center. Ooh. Nice. And I don't remember ever having an O. Henry bar because I think I was thinking of Baby Ruth when I was thinking about the American yeah. one. I usually never this had peanutty like, this candy. Me of a baby Ruth. Mm. It does really look like the inside of it. Oh, yeah. yum. I like the new goodie in the middle. Mm. This is mm. really good. I like this better than the, than the toffee one. Mm. Obviously, this is more chocolatey. That's probably why. Oh man, yes. This has this chocolate bar does have chocolate enrobing the chewiness and the peanuts. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's surrounded mm. by chocolate. Oh my gosh! Mm. Delicious. Thank you, Canada, for keeping O. Henry's in action. Yes. Mm. Crunchy peanuts, chewy fudge, yeah, my, uh... creamy caramel, covered in a chocolatey coating. Mm, I'm really liking it. I'm Yummy. still chewing it. It's so good. That's delicious. Yeah. All right, so I'm opening up the coffee crisp whenever we're ready. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to eat half of this. Let's see. <laughs> I'm just... I just, oh, I can break I it. I just you chunked off it. a little. Okay, good. It yeah, doesn't it's breakable. So it's like, a, it's like a coffee wafer surrounded by chocolate. That smells so good. Is this the coffee crisp? Oh. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. This remind me of the wafer cookies that I've had of yesteryear. Oh, the yesteryear's wafer cookies. But just cookies. enrobed in chocolate. Oh, I didn't. Think... And added and, oh, and a coffee crisp. flavor. This is delicious. Coffee crisps sound delicious. I've just heard good mm. things about them, and I've wanted to try them for ages, so I'm excited. Yeah, definitely getting a coffee vibe, though there's not like... It's like a fake coffee vibe, but it's still coffee. It's a fake coffee. It's a yeah. There yeah. is technically coffee in this in this recipe. Oh, I'm looking at Hello. the ingredients. It says coffee. Is there caffeine? Mm. Mm. Ooh, that's no, got a good amount of, of crisp. Mm-hmm. 
It's a really light layer of the chocolate. Wow, that's very good too. Oh my gosh. Coffee is the seventh from the bottom of the list. Yeah, yeah, it's towards the end, but there is a little dash of coffee. Oh man. It's good. Yum, yum, yum. Made by Nestle. Nestle, also in Canada. By Made... Nestle. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> but um, bum. Product of oh. Canada. So, oh, do you guys baby. want to hear some some more fun facts? I would love to yeah. hear some fun facts. All right. So, as promised, I'm gonna my eat fun one facts of are, of, are of a theme as well. Okay. These are fun facts about curling. <gasps> and not curling your hair. I do mean the sport. The beloved sport in Canada, curling. I'm sweeping. I'm sweeping. Um, exactly. There's sweeping involved. There's, there's sliding. A giant yeah, sleep, sweeping and sliding. Ducking and diving. I don't think that's part of it. Duck and diving. Duck. Okay. Yeah, two yeah. two f true facts and one fake <gasps> fact. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm ready. All right. I don't know what to call it because we've already done one in A. Uh, triangle. <laughs> Uh oh, the triangle fun write fact. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, you call it the first one. Okay, um, thank you. The movie Men with Brooms is about four men who reunite after ten years to compete in the Golden Broom Bond Spiel. It features appearances by Canadian legend Leslie Nielsen and the band The Tragically Hip. Wow, Canadian legend no Leslie Nielsen, and we didn't mention him. I know. I completely forgot him, even though I I didn't know he was Canadian. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, please fly. He's a lie, and he's not Canadian. Oh. <laughs> or is he? <laughs> <laughs> trickery. It could be trickery. One way to find out. Um, to wait for the Circle, end. or the second one. <laughs> uh, curlers are responsible for building Canada's first indoor ice rink, the Royal Alberta Curling Club, first established in 1807 by a group of Scottish immigrants, is now the oldest active sports club in North America. Wow. And square, the third one. The first curling stones in Canada were made of iron, weighing between 60 and 80 pounds, and shaped like tea kettles. All of today's curling stones are made of granite, sourced exclusively from two quarries in Scotland and Wales. Oh, man. Can you read the first sentence of that one again, please, Joelle? The first curling stones in Canada were made of iron. Oh, yes. Thank you. Do you want to hear the second yeah, part? Yeah, maybe that? the second part, too. Weighing between 60 and 80 pounds and shaped like tea kettles. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. I'm intrigued. I feel like that fact is so weird that it's probably true. Because having stones be made of iron instead of stone, when I know that's what they're made of now. <laughs> can you read this? Can you read circle again? <laughs> that was the, the second. second one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, curlers are responsible for building Canada's first indoor ice rink, the Royal Alberta Curling, the Curling Club, first established in 1807 by a group of Scottish immigrants, is now the oldest active sports club in North America. Hmm. Curling club is hard to say. Curling club. Curling club. Curling club. Hmm. Ah, these are all these these all feel plausible. <laughs> I wonder. Oh. Mark, mark, mark. Can you read the first one? <laughs> <laughs> the movie Men with Brooms is about four men who reunite after 10 years to compete in the Golden Broom Bond Spiel. It featured appearances by Canadian legend Leslie Nielsen oh. and the band The Tragically Hip. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to say triangle, only because there's a lot of facts in there. And I feel like <laughs> one of them, ha -ha. Any of them could be twisted. That's not true. true. That's a good point. And we have, has it been this? Oh, no, it hasn't. I was wondering if it was always the first one that we had be false. It, that's not true. And I just looked at the light and blinded myself. I'm going to say what was circle was the one about circle the ice, the, the ice one? enclosed ice rink. I'm yeah. going to say circle is my answer for the false. Sarah, you were correct. <gasps> oh, was the falseness the enclosed part? The well, only thing different is that instead of the Royal Alberta Curling Club, it was the Royal Montreal. Curling you Club. sneaky! <laughs> That's so sneaky! 
lucky. How would we ever do that? <laughs> we didn't. We didn't clarify what the difference had to be. It was no, false. No, it's, it's, I love it. You could do anything. I'm very, anything could be false. I very lucked into that. Everything one about that first one is entirely true, and I need to go find this movie and watch it. Yeah, Men with Brooms, and I like that it's called a Bonspiel. I feel like a I've heard spiel. that before. But, um, I I did not know that term when I mentioned it to Nick. He's like, they talked about bunch bills more than once in Schitt's Creek, and I was oh, like, oh, oh my gosh, what? That's so, so funny. I had to go rewatch all. It's pres- a it's a it's a curling tournament, and like, it, it must translate to like, like a championship good play. Yeah, right. Basically. Like I like that. I don't remember them or talking about bunch spiel or curling. Did they talk about curling? I don't even think they said curling. I think they just said, yeah, we went to the bond spiel. It's like, just I think that's, so it's understood. Just a side note. It was probably something Chris Elliott said or something. Something amazing. That's Who knows? so fun. You have to rewatch the whole show and I'll report back. Oh, I, like I also it. have to find this movie. That I'm sounds... obsessed. I can't believe this movie exists. Right? I mean, it's got Leslie Nielsen in it. It is it's it not only... a main character, but he's in it. Yeah. yeah. He makes an appearance. I think he's like someone's dad or something. Plays huh. TV movie dad. <laughs> Sorry for messing with you guys, but no, Sarah still got it. I loved it. I loved it. It was great. I was like, she, it could have been a, it could have been not the tragically hip, and she just replaced that with the tragically yeah. hip. Yeah, could have like, very well been, been bare like... naked ladies. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Could so have, funny. Have been Martin or Short instead of like, Leslie Nielsen. Instead of the four broomsmen, it could have been like the three broomsmen. Three. The five broomsmen. broomsmen. Like. It's true. It so so like, there you go. It, it could have been called the Silver Broom Bond Spiel instead yes. of the Golden Broom Bond <gasps> yes. Spiel. So many trickeries. I did think about making that one false, but I thought that that, that would be too obvious to be the false one. Oh. So I just left it exactly as what as is. Tricky. Just like the layers of trickery. I love it. It was very fun. <laughs> so silly. What a surprise. What a treat. Just like all these well, treats. Yeah. So last but not least, what's our favorite Canadian food after the um, mukbang that we've enjoyed today? It was so good. Everything Ooh, was delicious. I think my favorite of the treats that that were available to us today, because I had another one yeah. afterwards, are these delicious maple oh, cookies. Oh, those maple, maple leaf cookies. cookies. I, think, I don't think I've ever had a maple cookie before. Mm. Oh, yeah. I don't think. know if I have either. Have I ever had a maple I, cookie? I've had these before because I've, I've picked them up in my trip to like Vermont at one oh. point. Like you can get them oh. anywhere you get maple syrup. Yeah. Oh. I think. So I know I've had them. Hmm. I'm They're just, good. I brought them back to the But are they products of Canada? The Vermont ones would be products of Vermont, and the Canadian oh. ones would be products of Canada. <laughs> um, I gotcha. It's a maple syrup, you know. But this, this item. specific brand right. is a Canadian is, brand. Is Canadian one. I gotcha. Got it. Very tasty. Very good. I oh. I keep going back to it. I really enjoyed the simplicity and tastiness of that maple sugar candy was so amazing. Mm. <laughs> Could eat that more um i should not eat as, more. as much as i love sweet things and almost all of these were absolutely delectable i'm going back to the chip because that all dress <gasps> chip was something i want to experience more often in the future it was good I, I'm, I'm always more of a savory versus sweet kind of person when it comes to stuff mm. um that was really good i enjoyed the heck out of it yeah so, so tasty they were all great chip. oh my gosh and the but if i'm bars. going outside of what we have here it's always going to be poutine. Always. <gasps> Until you time. get a beaver tail. Right. Until I like, try, try beaver tail. But like I said, I'm, I'm more savory than sweet. Like, I'll enjoy the heck out of a beaver tail, but my go-to will always be poutine. Wait, but there's... Remember, when we looked at those beaver tails online, they also offer the poutine beaver tail, which is the beaver tail topped with poutine. So you, you could know make what? it savory. I might be able to have both at the same time, just mm-hmm. the, perfectly maxed yep. out on perfection with the yeah. beaver tail poutine. Yep. Oh my gosh. And then at the top of the episode, we did talk about Timbits, and I just wanted oh. to briefly mention Tim Hortons. Yes. because. Lovingly called never... Timmy's in Canada. Oh, called Timmy's. Oh. Timmy's. So in upstate Timmy's. New York, we had a Tim Hortons where I went to school. And, oh, wow. Did you call it um, Timmy's? No, we, we call it Tim Hortons. We were very respectful. We didn't, we didn't call it its nickname. <laughs> you were not on a first name basis. But their donuts are delightful. I've heard their coffee is not great, but people love it anyway. Oh. Um, from what I understand, like Canadians like are addicted to their coffee, but it's not good. And everyone acknowledges Aww. that. <laughs> oh. Well, And then Timbits are like little donut holes. We, we would call them donut holes or like, uh, what do they call them at Dunkin' Munchkins. Donuts? Mm-hmm. The Munchkins. Yeah. But Timbits is a great name for the little donut holes. Timbits. And they are better I will say than Munchkin. Ooh, so. the only way we can know is to try them both. So we'll yes. have to. I'll be the judge of that. Yes, Blind right. taste mm-hmm. test of Timbits and Munchkins. Oh baby, I want to eat all the things, and yeah. I'm I'm very full of sweet things right now. I have probably ate too many I more know. bites. Too many bites. My tum-tum yeah. hurts. 
Right. Oh, oh, sorry. There's one more thing I wanted to mention. So Montreal bagels are a whole other thing oh. that we didn't try today. Yes. But I've had them. Okay. Because we have that local pop-up that has French. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yes. Tell us. I do not like a Montreal bagel. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm very sorry to our friends in are Montreal like and the French what community. Are they, like? they are like, imagine a smaller bagel. Like it's thinner than a, than a regular like okay. New York style bagel. Um, it is so densely covered with either sesame seeds or poppy seeds. Oh, wow. That there's like no breathing room. It is like, it's so jam packed. It's like soaked into the, you know, so crispy. Is it all, I don't think these all, are boiled bagels. Are they, and they're all, are the, is the coating on all sides of the bagels? And it's on all not sides. Just sprinkles? Okay. Wow. It is fully. And so it's a really intense flavor of that poppy or sesame to the point where I was like, this is too much poppy. Like I now know what too much poppy seeds oh. are. Um, I didn't know is that was it, a thing. Is it only poppy or sesame, or are there other flavors? There may be others. The the, the two I was able to to see were the poppy and sesame uh, in this particular hmm. place. But they might. I'm sure they branch out and try other kinds. But um, yeah, it's just, it's a ve- it's densely the, are those packed. like the traditional. They might be. Here, I'm yeah. gonna look it up. The yeah. I'm very interested in. I I did read some about them, and I understand the whole the the hole is usually bigger. It's a bigger I, hole. That it's like a yes, bialy shape. Odd shaped. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like. It looks like a Bialy if the Bialy didn't have the bottom the filling in filled it? in. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, um, man. I yeah, still want to try it. I want to try it. I tried it. Like, I, I had to put a lot of cream cheese oh. on it to enjoy it, though. So. You guys, can I can I read the brief Wikipedia description? Oh, please do. Please do. Okay. Um, it is a distinctive variety of handmade wood-fired baked bagel. In contrast to the New York-style bagel or the East Coast-style bagel, which contains sourdough, the Montreal bagel is smaller, thinner, sweeter, and denser with a larger hole and is always baked in a wood-fired un- wow. oven. Huh. It contains malt, egg, no salt, and is boiled in honey-sweetened water before Ooh. baked. Interesting. Interesting. Honey-sweetened. Yeah. The two pre- pre- predominant varieties are black seed, also known as poppy seed, and white seed, known as sesame seed. Ah! That's like so funny. Yeah. Black, seed seed. White seed. black or white, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, they are their own thing. Like I, I like as, as a bagel purist, like they are their own thing. I will not be able to compare them to a New York bagel. Gotcha. And that's okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, they fine. weren't for me. They were just huh. they were too intense with the with the seed. Ah. That, was, that was my issue. Like the flavor. They're also the actual bread itself was good, but huh? you know, like the New York bagel. The Montreal bagels were brought to North America by Jewish immigrants from Poland and other oh. Eastern European countries. Nice. So they both have okay. origins in um, Europe. Oh, all right. Yum. Interesting. That's cool. That's Love fascinating. Those boiled breads. Not I'm all about that. history, just access but... to different <laughs> materials. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, I, I, I gave it a try. And yeah. Some things aren't for, for, for me. What are is you going to do? that the same place that does the pop-up poutine truck too, Joa? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the place so... is called pop-up poutine and... They only serve on like three days of three days a week in the hmm. middle of the week. <laughs> Someday I'll find when they're serving and I'll not be too far away. They have popped up, but yeah. they've been like, I don't want to drive forty five minutes for it. No. Where do they pop up? They, well, when they, when they're not at their at their like brick and mortar kind of rented space, they they go all over. Sometimes they have a like a, a tent at like a farmers market, or they'll do. Oh, I, I see. Think they drive around to things. I, I don't okay. know. Okay, and where's but, their home base? Not it's the... like it's it's uh over here in like Rockville. It's kind of near the oh the, near the guitar center over here. Oh oh, right by me. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> worth checking out well, if you're in the area. Maybe I'll check it out. Yeah, when they're around. Mm. Yeah. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah. Oh, oh. This is a full full episode, friends. And I'm a full two episodes. Two episodes. Two episodes. That's right. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good Canada A episode, eh? We enjoyed the heck out of learning all things Canada A today. <laughs> it was Canada A F. <laughs> oh, that was really good. So delightful. <laughs> it was Canada. It's Canada A F. That can be a so two can be Canada A F. Maybe yep, that's what I was about to. That's what I'm writing down on. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Uh, well, if. If everyone listening wants to tell us their favorite things about Canada, yes. I would love love I would... to hear what we missed. I'm yes. sure we missed a lot. Yeah, oh, tell yeah. us for and sure. If, and if I messed anything else up that that uh, my two co-hosts did not catch, <laughs> feel free to to call me out. No, cause... no, it's fine. I mean, <laughs> it was we perfect. Learning. Yes, and it was fun. I, but I look forward I, I to follow I actually did look up hard again, and apparently, there was like. At one point, they did say that they were from Vancouver, and then like they decided that they decided that they didn't want to be from. I don't know. 
There's like some drama about it. Oh so no, the drama. Now I feel less <laughs> bad that I mislabeled them because yeah. they had, they said something. It was at one point confusing for them as well, where yes. they were going to decide yes. they were from. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, <laughs> Try to yeah. move Joelle. As she shifts around, as we need to close oh, the, the episode because Joelle is going to be blinded by the sun that is coming into her yeah, window. It is it is six p.m. here on the east coast in the middle in the in late March, and I am being blinded by the sun. Yes, I yeah. think it's a good time for us to uh to say adieu. Yeah, as they say in Canada. So should should we should we thank our awesome oh, producer? Yes, thank oh, you, of course, producer Always. Jack Wait Blank of Monkey Cat Studios. Studios for providing water as well as a wonderful two episode. Um, <laughs> special work 4748 oh, oh and should we also give one more shout out to remind our listeners to use yes. pocket pod 10 at canadianmunch.com and try any of many of these delightful treats that we, yeah. we sampled today most of them you can get there some of those we got other places boop, boop, but boop. yeah you might be able to get some of the treats too. near home but if not check out uh canadian munch for sure canadian munch it's worth and with that Hey, thanks for watching the second half of our Canada A video episode. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. And check out these links over here. There are things we think you'd like, including other Pocket Pod stuff. And how about some Saturday morning fam jam featuring none other than Leash? And find our podcast any place that podcasts are available by searching for Pocket Pod. We love you. Thank you. Good night. Pocket Pod.